Shalom and welcome to Frontline Israel. I'm Joel Bell. We're coming to you live from our studios here in Eretz Israel. Today my guest is Richard Perry. Richard Perry has written a number of books in reference to prophecy and end time prophecy. Richard, welcome to Frontline Israel. Joel, thanks for the invitation to be with you. Richard, you uh, also you have a radio show uh, in Athens, Georgia. You yeah. reside in Athens, Georgia? Athens, Georgia. My wife and I have been living there for the last 10 years now. 10 years. Excellent. Yeah. I would like to go straight in to the whole transition that got you from America uh, into prophecy and now here sitting in Eretz Israel, just north of Jerusalem. Okay, well, I, I had, uh, you know, I grew up in the church. I guess I should start to say that. And I, but it wasn't until I'd gone away to college and, and uh, some people, my mother and my father, started to pray for me that I really uh, started to get into the Word of God. And I uh, it was about 1980, and I had uh, read the, the book of Revelation in the, in the New Testament and uh, was prompted to read from that, end up reading the whole Bible. So I started reading in Genesis and took me about four months to read through the whole, uh, all of Scripture. And uh, that started a journey because I, I realized or I accepted at that point that this was the truth and I needed to know it and I needed to adhere to it and I needed to try to understand it. Uh, so I continued you know, to study from about 1980 uh, on a pretty regular basis. But, uh, and I, the Lord had s sent me to Central America for on some mission work. I was at, lived in Central America for about six years. Uh, came back uh, Lord was really gracious and I, I met my future my present wife and uh, we got married and uh, and we moved around a little bit and then ended up in Athens Georgia but it was in it was in about 1997 in Athens Georgia that I felt like in my study of scripture that I had not really understood biblical prophecy and I started to really dig in I mean I you know uh, Surrounded myself with all kind of research material. I had the, uh, the the Bibles on computer, and I had that capability of referencing and uh, uh, referring to uh, the Hebrew and the Greek and all the various translations of the Bible. And I really dug in and spent a, you know a fairly significant amount of time um, reading and studying from the Scripture. And of course, I felt like as as I dug into that, the scripture says that iron sharpens iron, like, you know, one man sharpens another. So I needed to be taking into consideration, you know, what others, you know, had, 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 had stated or what others had believed at various times through history. So I ended up assembling a fairly large collection of books. Uh, matter of fact, my library got up to close to 200 books on eschatology. I had books written by Sir Isaac Newton in 1733 up to books that were you know, currently being written. And so I had a chance to really see uh, a lot of different eschatology that had developed in the church history over the last, uh, well, almost 2,000 years now. Uh, so I was studying this stuff, and you know, I, I got into teaching it, and uh, and then it was then it was about 2001. Matter of fact, it was in October of 2001, one month after 9/11 in the United States, and I was in the process of teaching some classes on end times and the return of the Messiah. And uh, one evening, the Lord, it was like He was asking me to pray, so I, I started to pray. As I got into the prayer, for, it was for quite a while. He did something very unusual. Is he he gave me the name of a person and a person that I I didn't know. He said C. Doctor Schaefer. So I had uh, I started to think about that, like who could he be referring to? And I ended up um, recalling that in Athens, Georgia, there was this professor called by the name of Doctor Schaefer, who was a scientist. But it was also, he was in this Christian faculty forum, and I thought, well, okay, that's the only really Dr. Schaefer I'm even aware of. So I called his office uh, and asked to speak with him, and his secretary, you know, took the call, and she said, well, I'll give him the message. And I, you know, I really didn't expect to hear back from him, since he didn't know me, and I didn't know him. 
But that afternoon he called me back, and it was about 3 o'clock, and after I was relating to him the things that I'd been studying and the things that, you know, uh, that I felt like uh, God was placing on my heart, uh, he said, well, we better get together. And he said, how about my office on Wednesday at 11? So I, I said, I'll be there. And uh, so I went over to his office, and we talked for about an hour, and he had taught on Revelation in the Bible for several times, and uh, so we had this really interesting conversation. And during the conversation, um, he said, you know, you should write a book. But I, I dismissed that. And later on, as we, were, as we were finishing up, he had to go to his lecture. And he said, uh, you know, I have to leave for my lecture. And I started to excuse myself. And I said, you know, I really appreciate this time. I said, I'm not sure why God put us together. And as I said that, he said, no. He said, you're supposed to write a book. Um, wow. And uh, so I took that to heart. And... Within the next month, I started to write what I felt like God was, you know, was showing me in, from the scriptures and what, you know, he would have wanted me to write down. Uh, and so I wrote this book over a period of about two years, and, and the book got published, uh, came out in 2003, and I uh, had the book. And by the way, a friend of mine, during this whole process, he said I should put up a website mm -hmm. so that, you know, people could find this material because I don't have, you know, I'm not, I don't have a theological background. I'm just kind of. What's the name? Of, what was the name of that book? The the name of the book is "Of the Last Days." Listen, I tell you a mystery. Uh, that that was my first book, and and the website is uh, www.lastdaysmystery.info. You can find, by the way, you can find that first book on my website free because the Lord never told me to sell the book. He just said write it. But when I got the book, I was you know I kept feeling like God didn't want me to do anything with it, promote it, do book signings, you know, sell the book, you know, that kind of thing. So I was seeking the Lord to see what is it that he wanted me to do. And I kept going back to him saying, you know, Lord, so what am I supposed to do with this book? Uh, and he finally said, after several months, he, si he simply said this. He said, you're supposed to take what I, the message that I've given you and give it to the pastors, the shepherds of the flock, and they should test it. And then they'll know, you know, what to do with the message. And I thought, oh, well, this is just perfect because this is exactly what I believe, you know, we should do. Work within the authority right. of the church and go to the, the shepherds. And they're the ones that have responsibility for the flock. Give the message to them. Now, I probably should stop and say the message, you know, was not the book that God had given me. But it was, it was a three-point message. Uh, it was, certainly was contained in the book. But the, the message was simply this. And it was the first Part of it, you know, the Lord, the way he told me to say it was very abrupt, very straightforward, very clear, I thought, and a little bit politically incorrect, you know. But it was simply, there is no pre-trib rapture. In other words, a pre-tribulation removal of the church before the, the time of the end. Uh, and the next part of the message was, the second part was, that now, right now, is the time that the church was to be teaching what the scripture said about the return of Christ and the end of the age and the coming kingdom. Not what man was teaching, but what the scripture taught. And the third part of the message was uh, kind of a sobering part of the message is that there would be great consequences, severe consequences even, for the church, if the church didn't wake up and wasn't prepared for the for the times, uh, and uh, and I could explain that in detail, but we that would have Amen. to be another show. But so anyway, I was taking this message to pastors and giving this three part message: no pre trib rapture, no pre trib removal of the church. Now is the time to be teaching this information to the church. And three, that there would be consequences if we didn't wake up to the signs of the times and understand. Uh, so I had I started giving this message out, and nobody was interested. So I stopped on my own. And months later, the Lord said, "You shouldn't stop. You need to finish this assignment." Uh, and so I said, "Okay, I'm back on the job." And I started again. And I started. I made a list of 160 pastors from the play, the city that I live in. Uh, all the ones that I could find, and I started going through that list. Now, what's really surprising to me is that, you know, cold calling pastors and saying, God has done this in my life, and God has said, I'm supposed to give you a message. Would you go to lunch with me? 
I had 86 of the 160 pastors wow. actually go to lunch with me or 